All right, guys, welcome back. We got to talk about this fancy skyscraper in San Francisco. You probably read the title and you're probably thinking, oh, you're telling me this whole entire tower is going to foreclosure? Like, what's going on? So Nima is kind of like this very expensive luxury skyscraper in San Francisco. Pretty much they rent to like the tech bros. So I'm pretty sure rent is like super expensive for a one bedroom. If you drop a little guy down, this is by far one of the chillest and most beautiful luxury apartment skyscrapers and it's literally one crossroad from the twitter hq or i guess it's called x corp now and not to mention around the area you also have big companies right startups also got uber lyft who used to have their hq here but they've moved out so all you need to know is this is a fantastic very nice building which is right next to twitter and right next to some of the best companies in the world so obviously you know their vacancy rate should be very very low because these twitter employees make a crap ton of money and they are willing to spend thousands and thousands of dollars on like a one bedroom apartment now if you check out nema it's full-on luxury if you check out some of these units they're very nice you know great views of the city but guess what they are now so broke they're so vacant right now they can't even like pay their everyday bills guys they can't pay their electricity bill hoa maintenance staff and also especially the property tax because this is a multi-hundred unit building and the amount of property tax and maintenance that it needs is astronomical i can't imagine that i'm pretty sure they have to fill at least one third to even break even so check this out default intimate on 384 million dollar loan for nema san francisco tower now the loan is backed by a massive skyscraper of course you know it's a 754 units luxury skyscraper also have pretty you know nice amenities cool gym all this different stuff so this loan of almost 400 million dollars the building itself can't pay it back in fact, the luxury apartment complex has been struggling to fill vacancies, but even back a few years ago, it was struggling a little bit, but it was still doing okay. You know, the landlords were making a decent profit, but then the pandemic hit, a lot of people didn't work in San Francisco anymore. And then they were like fully prepared to have this massive wave of new tech guys coming to San Francisco. But then suddenly nobody came back. San Francisco essentially lost 150,000 office workers. That's almost 200,000 people. And this is why San Francisco streets are so empty. The place where this is located is basically the trenches at this point. You have the federal building around this area. You know, also have a civic center plaza. The amount of homelessness, crime, and open air drug markets in this location is so high right now. In fact, I feel bad for the Twitter employees who still have to go back to their ex headquarters. Because now this place is no longer a cool place. The mall's closed, Union Square is basically gone with crazy high vacancies. All of these front row stores are all closed. And basically it's a ghost town. Nobody's walking around here. And also it's actually a very dangerous place to walk around at night. So say goodbye to the nightlife. And it's not just this skyscraper guys, but several other big projects have halted and even canceled their construction. Because around this area, they were deciding to build like two massive skyscrapers and one of the most recent ones that canceled was this massive lot right next to you know the reddit hq and the twitter hq and nema they're about to build like this massive skyscraper and now they're fully canceling this if you check out hayes tower this is by far one of the coolest skyscrapers you have a lot of offices it's a very tall skyscraper luxury condos luxury apartments you name it but guess what the developers actually broke ground they actually flattened the land, they got the employees, they got the architects, and they also got the heavy machinery. And then suddenly, they have now fully canceled it. They canceled this building, they're not building it. They know how crap San Francisco is. If they actually went ahead, spent almost a billion dollars building this, they're not gonna be making any money. I mean, look at their next door neighbor, right? These guys aren't even filling their units, even to like 50%. I'm pretty sure they're only filling a third of the units and maybe even less with so many of the San Francisco guys leaving out of town, okay? And also, you're seeing massive tech layoffs. We're seeing less people work in San Francisco, a lot of people working in other parts of the Bay Area, and why even work in San Francisco when there's so many better places to live in? This is why San Francisco real estate prices are down heavy. They're down bad right now. 
Oakland is down bad, San Francisco is down bad, and even Napa Valley is having record low tourism rates. Check out this skyscraper. This is One Oak. This is supposed to also open right next to the NEMA Tower and X headquarters. But now these guys haven't even broken ground. They don't even want it. They just gave the land back to the lender. They're like, we don't want this at all. We're not breaking ground. We're not even risking our money. And it's not just these skyscrapers, these two skyscrapers halting construction, but across the bridge, you got Oakland, right? Oakland is also canceling a massive skyscraper in their downtown. And everyone says the same thing. You have such high vacancies. Nobody wants these offices. And you're basically gonna be in debt 100% if you build one of these towers in San Francisco. And the thing about these towers is they're so expensive to keep up. I mean, how are you supposed to pay back your loans and also property tax and maintenance and staff salaries when you're not even like half full, right? A lot of these towers are super empty. You also have like ground floor retail, which is empty office empty and also apartments barely anyone's living there now the civic center is basically a ghost town if you look at this there's barely anyone on the street there's also a lot of people who are mentally ill and on drugs especially fentanyl and of course there's not really that much law enforcement either which makes it a really freaky and scary place to live if you look at the civic center station which is like their subway center an elevator attendant was punched in the face and it would cause a delay in service Absolutely crazy, guys. The Civic Center, as you can know by now, is probably not the best place to live. Whereas before, it was okay. It was kind of close to the Tenderloin District, but it was okay. And it still had a lot of big tech companies and great nightlife around the area, but now it's basically a very scary place to live. Just like three blocks down the Civics area, you have this scene. This is going to be the federal building. You know, Nancy Pelosi, all that great stuff. You already have a bunch of people smoking crack, smoking fentanyl, people addicted and high on drugs, obviously an open air drug market situation. And nobody cares at this point. I mean, I can't imagine a scene like this walking through. Imagine walking to work at like Reddit, Uber, or X and you gotta walk through this. Imagine leaving your luxury condo that you're paying thousands of dollars for a studio for and you walk through this. It's absolutely crazy. Something like this should not happen. And people are absolutely stunned. In fact, it's like so bad that the federal building even told employees, hey, don't even come back. Like seriously, don't even come back. Just work from home and stay at home until we tell you to come back, which what they mean is don't even come back at all. And of course, you know, one of the prime areas of the NEMA is obviously the mall. Westfield Mall is now completely closed. Nordstrom has left. Bloomingdale has left. Even the T-Mobile flagship store has left. This is not a great place for any business owner to be in, let alone like massive landlords and multi-billion dollar loans. So NEMA probably gonna be going for a default route. It's sad because this is honestly a very, very nice tower. And it's not just these guys defaulting on loans over a hundred million dollars. We also have massive defaults, for example, for the mall, for the hotels around the area. And it's becoming like a multi-billion dollar default for several of these buildings. And it's scary to see San Francisco's real estate and landlords just go broke. 